Hey everyone, so in this video, what you're gonna find out is how we did in the residential real estate market in Edmonton for 2019. Also, you're gonna find out where we're going. What does the residential real estate market in Edmonton for 2020 look like? In addition, I'm gonna let you in on a few risks that could affect this forecast. Well, grab your coffee and let's get started. So you have your coffee and you're all settled in. Let's first talk about what happened last year. So last year I forecasted that we would see an improvement in the market by October, the last quarter of 2019. Well, we ended up seeing that improvement much earlier in the year. And we ended up having a little bit of a slump in late 2019. Was this improvement just a blip? Are we starting to trend downward? Well, before I get into the details, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss out on my residential real estate market updates monthly and other videos that I post weekly. Okay, so for the review of 2019, we're gonna look at two segments like I normally do, the single family detached home segment and the condo segment. So we're gonna start with the single family detached home segment. Sales versus inventory. We started 2019 with a large supply compared to 2018. And it wasn't until May 2019 where we saw our inventories drop below 2018, but they continued to decline. Also in May 2019 is when our sales started outpacing 2018 sales in nearly every month for the rest of the year. Similarly, with condos in Edmonton, sales started to improve by May 2019. Though we did start with lower condo inventory in 2019 than we did in 2018. In fact, the inventory levels in the condo market for 2019 peaked at about the same as the lowest levels of condo inventory in 2018. This left buyers with fewer condo options, which is probably a good thing because there was more sales. In 2019, your chance of selling also improved by May for both single family detached homes and the condo segment. As you normally hear me talk about in my monthly market updates, the chance of selling helps you define which market you're in. So you're in a buyer's market when your chance of selling is zero to 30%. A balanced market is defined by 30 to 50% chance of selling and a seller's market is 50% or greater for your chance of selling. The single family detached home segment remained in a buyer's market for the full year. However, on a positive note, May to August were quite strong months. Even though they were a buyer's market, they were pretty close to a balanced market. In September, even though your chance of selling dropped by about 5%, it stayed flat for the rest of the year. Condos, on the other hand, well, it wasn't really much different other than it was a strong buyer's market for condos for the full year. But just like with the single family detached home segment, we saw a marked improvement in May. And that improvement carried throughout the whole year, except December. What does this mean for 2020? There was some positive growth in 2019. Will that continue for 2020? Let's have a look at what we're gonna see in the residential real estate market for Edmonton for 2020. I attended the 2020 housing forecast by the Realtors Association of Edmonton, and I have some great takeaways that I wanna share with you. The following things that affect the housing market are inflation, GDP, rental vacancy, employment, interest rates, and population growth. So first up, inflation. The chief economist for the Alberta government, Catherine Rothrock, advised that inflation has eased amid the falling energy prices. And she doesn't foresee it impacting consumer spending. So with respect to the housing market, when inflation eases, it stimulates spending which means there could be more people looking to buy a home, increasing demand. GDP. Things look really positive for GDP growth. Both the city of Edmonton senior economist Felicia Motherty and Catherine Rothrock from Alberta government agree that the GDP growth will be better in 2019. In 2019, we saw a forecasted growth of 0.5% for Edmonton and 0.6% forecasted for Alberta. In 2020, GDP growth is expected to be 1.4% for Edmonton and 2.7% for Alberta. 
Now this is modest growth. It's kind of like when it's minus 45 outside and it warms up to a balmy minus 15. The important thing is, is that we're moving in the right direction. Rental vacancies, those, they're also improving. Felicia reported that they went from 7% in 2017 to 5.3% in 2018 to 4.9% in 2019. So basically, with lower vacancy, you're going to start to see higher rental rates, which gets people looking at their options, like home ownership. And since home prices in Edmonton are affordable, we may see demand improve as people transition from renting to owning. In fact, Lynette Trombley, Vice President of Strategy Innovation for Edmonton Global, and I don't mean Global Edmonton, the TV network, she said that Edmonton is one of the most affordable places for real estate in all of Canada. Employment, rather unemployment. These unemployment rates, unfortunately, are going to remain around the same as 2019. Even though there's indications that these are easing gradually, as there is an increase in employment and employment hours, it's seeming to be offset by immigration and in-migration. So, how does this relate to real estate? Simple. If you have cash or a job, you can buy a house. So, the unemployment rates easing, there may be more home buyers entering the market, which increases the demand. So interest rates lower for longer, like oil prices. You got it. It looks like interest rates aren't expected to change much at all this year, which is great because lower interest rates improves buying power and population growth. Everyone come, come to Edmonton. It's great. We have no mosquitoes in the winter. Population growth is expected to be strong. So the population grows and rental vacancies decrease. It looks like it's likely that property ownership demand may be increasing. Is everybody gonna live? As population grows, there's gonna be more demand for housing, whether that's rental or home ownership. Oh wait, I have another thing that could affect the housing market, the qualifying rules. The government is now looking at taking a regional approach to the mortgage qualifying rules. So should these rules ease in our region, that could also increase demand for home ownership. All in all, 2020 looks pretty positive. Everything seems to be indicating increased demand for home ownership other than the unemployment rates, but those are starting to ease and they just need time to gain momentum. We definitely won't shift from a strong buyer's market right into a seller's market, but things for 2020 are definitely looking more balanced. So depending on which segment you are in, you'll definitely see a difference between single family detached homes and condominiums. And as I promised, the risks that could affect this positive outlook on the housing market are from a big picture include a global recession, changes in US policy, and no movements on pipelines. And from a more local perspective, um, oil prices dropping, consumer confidence, and major rollbacks in the public sector, as 28% of Edmonton's workforce is in the public sector. Okay, so here's my advice for buyers and sellers. First, sellers. We are seeing price stabilization with a decrease in supply and an increase in demand. If you're listing your house for sale, you may not get multiple offers, but I also don't see you having to consider a lowball offer if you're priced at market value. And buyers, this is for you. All indications show that there won't be dramatic price increases in 2020. But, and a big but, things are moving in that direction. So if you want to be a homeowner or an investor, 2020 is the year to do it. Lower prices, low interest rates, this is an ideal time to buy. If you wait too long, you could be scrambling for something to buy that you can afford or that you want to spend. I'm Jen McPhillamy, real estate associate realtor with Yeg Pro Realty. As you may or may not know, Edmonton's market isn't only segmented by single family detached homes, condos, duplexes, row houses. We are also segmented by our neighborhoods. Even in a strong buyer's market overall, some neighborhoods are in a seller's market. If you're interested to learn more about a market in a specific neighborhood in Edmonton area, just reach out to me and I'll get you that information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.
up seeing that improvement in the well, we ended up seeing that improvement a lot earlier. Take five. That I'm going to provide to you in the next.